This is Randy Thompson coming to you live with Trudy Adams and Miss Annie. And Annie's a 10 year old Hanoverian that's just learning how to balance now. So this will be less than 10 times we've asked her to stay connected on the aids in the canter. Watch where your hands go! Annie likes to run out on that side of the ring. You know, so all we do is bring her back in. So now we're working on the canter and our goal today is for, that's all right, just keep feeling where your hands are. Remember, no matter what she does, you're just going to adjust your position, all right? There's nothing you can do wrong. You just keep checking. Put your hands in front of the withers. Make sure you've got a live connection with the rain and keep adjusting your seat so it's in the right place. It, then that's what we're working on in our lesson today. We started, this is the warm-up canter. We started with a walk trot and our goal is for Trudy to feel that the rain is alive. Very nice, do you feel the difference? That's right, keep the rain alive by checking where your seat is. So a live rain is when the horse is stepping up into the contact from the rider's legs. Again, this is new to Annie. Less than 10 lessons that we've cantered asking her to stay connected. So you can see what a horse looks like that's learning how to connect. Before that, she was riding her like a green horse with a loose rein and pretty much letting her pick the speed she wanted. But now we want her to stay connected. That's good, good, take your time. Check your hands right away, check your hands right away. Everything is gonna, that's good, just keep checking. That's your whole purpose for this warm up. You know, the warm up is to connect the horse and the rider. We're using it to, watch your hands. You feel that tendency to wanna lift them, right? It's not a bad thing. Put them down, put your hands down, put your hands down. Put, yep, keep your hands down, doesn't matter, you just fix it. Keep your hands down, good, Trudy. Much better. Keep your hands down because that keeps your seat in the right place. And I'm focusing on what she's doing with her hands and seat so you can see it here. Whoop. New camera. There you go. Good, Trudy. Yep, check your hands. Check your hands. The reins are starting to get long. So the average rider doesn't realize that professionals are adjusting their reins like every two to three strides. So their hands, that's why they look like they're never using their hands or legs because their hands stay in the same place because they're always adjusting them. Very good, shorten your rein. Your rein is too long. Your hands are coming back to the withers, behind the withers. That's all right, check your hand. You're doing great. It's too, yep, you might need a walk break. That was very good, take a walk break. Okay, so I'm glad I got this. On a little bit looser connection. I try to pick up the connection, she breaks. Right. Well, she's new at it. This is, we've done less than 10 lessons where we've asked her to stay connected at the canter. But what I saw that was really cool to watch is you're really becoming aware of when you're losing your position. Right. And as you get more tired, you find your reins will start getting longer and she gets more disconnected. Right. But that's normal. What I liked was you were, this is the most connected. You stayed with your riding position on the canter with her. You kept putting your hand up where it needed to be because if you're, as you know, if your hands aren't in the right place, your seat's not in the right place, and it's really hard for a horse to stay connected or in balance. Yes. Very nice, just take a walk break now. Good. What were you feeling as we did that? Wait, let me get closer. Let me get closer because I can't hear you when you get that far away. Excuse me while I walk up to her. I, I felt like my seat was better and my, I kept trying to think about my hip being forward. Oh, good. But I wasn't thinking about my hands, so I didn't feel that the reins were getting longer. I think what happens is when I start feeling her losing the momentum on the left canter lead, I start giving her, I start feeding her rain. Oh, that makes sense. So, so to get her to move forward. I want her to keep going. Right. But then she breaks anyway sometimes because she gets too heavy on. So what, what are you going to try the next time? Because now you felt putting the reins in front of you doesn't work. So you have to shorten your reins. No, it doesn't. It does in the beginning. You shorten your reins. You do a half halt with your seat. Remember right. the breathing in through your stomach, up through your chest, down through your seat. Then you have to add your leg. So if you right, I can do that almost from the very onset. I can pick up, I can ask her and take those half halts to the left, she breaks. Well, she will for a while because she's still new at it. But now we're going to start thinking more about the half halt because the left is your weaker side too. Yeah. 
So on the left, the first thing you have to do is make sure your hands are in the right place, which is in front of the withers, right? right. The second thing is when your hands are up there, you've got to adjust your seat with a half seat. And then to keep her from breaking, what do you add? Leg. The leg. I know it sounds so simple, but it's not. You know, it takes a thousand times to change a habit or to create something new, right? So here she's trying to figure out how to canter in connection. You know, less than 10 lessons that we've done the canter work connected. And you're trying to figure out how to keep your body as she changes her balance. Because when she was going like a green horse, it's really hard to stay in balance. Oh, yeah, my body was all over the place. My hands were up here. <laughs> well, and that's typical, you know, and that's all right. All right. Unless my hands were down here holding on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's why you have that. You'll notice she's got a strap in the front of the saddle. That's an I SOS strap. She never rides without it, and that's a, a good like precaution. Yep, like the helmet. It's a good precaution, especially when you're on a horse that's in training like this. It's just a safety thing.